In a surprising turn of events, the U.S. Senate has voted on a standalone aid package for Ukraine, as well as other U.S. allies. But just what provisions are in the package? And it still has to pass the House, and there it seems like there's still a lot of obstacles. I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's break this down. So we're also going to be talking, of course, about the tactical situation in Ukraine and why this aid is just so badly needed. So uh, President Biden is, of course, urging House Republicans to take up the $95 billion foreign aid bill that includes assistance to Ukraine and Israel. Uh, of course, early on Tuesday, the Senate passed the measure um, and saying that there's, quote, no question that it would pass if brought to the House floor. This is probably true. The bill actually passed by a very comfortable margin, 70 to 29. And when you even see those kind of ratios, remember that for a lot of senators, if they believe that a bill should be passed, but they want to publicly express their displeasure with some aspects of the bill, sometimes they will vote no only because the bill isn't actually in jeopardy of failing. Uh, so 7029, I think, is actually not quite reflective of the level of support that this it actually has within the Senate, right? I would suspect that at least 10 of those votes are symbolic no's, but if they were the deciding vote or if it was really close, the senators are actually flip sides. So, um, <clears throat> but, and generally, as a general rule, uh, the Senate for the, with this level of, of one-sidedness, uh, you're going to see something similar if it were to be brought to the House. Um, but the bill, of course, is going to be providing tens of billions of dollars in aid to U.S. allies, $60 billion for Ukraine, $14 billion for Israel, uh, and then in classic U.S. fashion, another $9 billion for humanitarian assistance in Gaza, uh, <laughs> which just, and then, of course, a few billion uh, to uh, strengthen Taiwan defenses. Um, so now I, I, I want to point this out because it's really, to me, quite important. Uh, the United States spends $1.5 trillion on the Department of Defense um, in billion, uh, in billions, you know, we're looking at something uh, around the 800. So, that, so that's like about a thousand billion, uh, one, you know, 1,500 billion. So scale that, right? So imagine if you had 1,500 bucks and somebody was like, hey, we'll throw in leather seats for 60 billion. So, so scale this sort of aid. And what's also important, this aid is going to be phased in over a period of years. And so it seems like a lot, but it's not even comparable. The DOD budget in the next three years, for example, will probably be something like, you know, 4,500 billion. And so we're talking about 60. So essential to Ukraine, um, of, of minimal, effect on the U.S. taxpayer, right? And, and I think that gets lost because as individuals, we're like, oh, 60 billion, that's like a whole Jeff Bezos, all right? That's like a whole, that's like a lot of billionaires. And it's, it, it is a preposterous amount of money. And I'm not saying that it's like worth giving away, but also remember a lot of this is gonna come right back to the United States, particularly Israel, where the scheme for many decades has been, we give Israel aid, um, but they're essentially just coupons uh, that they can use and redeem at any U.S.-based arms manufacturer. That way, the Israelis, who are good at high-tech stuff and war, don't become competitors of U.S. defense, uh, the defense industry, right? Instead, the Israelis don't grow their own homegrown defense industries because it's free for them to buy from Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. So just understand sort of the details of these schemes because they they explain why these senators often uh, are willing to get behind these programs, right? Because remember, senators love nothing more than to trade stocks, and uh, they always every every dollar needs to be clearly funneled back to a U.S. based company, um, which is I guess fine because then we're going to tax it again and send it off again. Okay, but there's a problem. As much as this aid would be great, um, the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, has said uh, he, he's not doing anything. He said this bill is just uh, stupid. 
Uh, let's see if we can uh, find it. Um, so there's a lot about what Trump said, but I'm going to see if I can find his quote. Uh, his quote was pretty uh, mind-numbingly stupid, if I remember correctly, right? Of course, Biden pointing out that supporting this bill is standing up to Putin and opposing it is playing directly into Putin's hands. Um, of course, as a general rule, I mean, Mike Johnson said there's no way he's going to bring this to a vote. And remember, when you're the Speaker of the House, you can control if something does or does not get a vote on the House floor. And the fear is that he himself um, will just simply pigeonhole this bill, never bring it up for a vote, so it'll never have an opportunity to actually get passed. That's kind of the fear, and that's the worst case scenario. And it's a pretty bad sign, honestly, when uh, the president and the House Democrats are out here just making public statements, being like, please, please pass it. It's a sign of powerlessness. It means that there's no behind the scenes negotiations to be done. There's no strings he can pull or pork he can add to the bill. He just has to come out in front of the cameras and say, please, and we're just begging you to please move it through. So we're going to talk about why this is just so badly needed. Um, but if you are yourself wishing you could get an injection of some serious energy, some serious umph, uh, well, I don't have that, but I have strike gum. Strike gum is a chewing gum. It's not going to inject you with anything. So rest assured, I hate needles. I would never in a million years sell an injectable product. Um, I would, though, sell a chewing gum, which has 90 milligrams of caffeine. That's as much as a Red Bull, as much as an Amp Energy. But unlike a Red Bull, one, uh, this has zero sugar, and you get five pieces of gum, the equivalent of five Red Bulls for like $5.99. So it's super, super uh, affordable, especially if you're an energy drink guy, right? I've seen what they cost. They're like four bucks now. More. Inflation ramping back up. So check us out, strikegum.com. We have veterans discounts. We have new customer discounts. We have gift cards. Don't get it for your wife for Valentine's Day, guys. I'm, 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 I'm here looking out for you, okay? But check us out, strikegum.com. Now, here's why the situation is so critical. In the last 24 hours, we've seen around the town of Avdivka, Russian forces have continued their advance. And what's really troubling is that Ukraine's new commander-in-chief, Commander Sirsky, seems to have committed Ukrainian reserves to pres to continue to fight and counterattack in this area. We've seen actually um, footage of some of these counterattacks. The fighting is really vicious, especially around the coke plant here. Um, but there's some rumors, as you can see, Russian forces able to, in the last oh, 48 hours or so, you can see critically they're occupying one of the main roads in and out of Avdivka. And what's scary about this is that this is now... The defending Ukrainian forces have entirely to rely on this roadway here, crossing a big open field um, in order to get into or out of Avdivka, right? It's sort of like having a heart attack, right? A healthy heart has lots of routes, and that's what you want in a combat zone. You want lots of ways to get your resources to your troops and get, of course, broken equipment and injured soldiers back out, right? And so to do that, right, a healthy heart has a half dozen, right? Um, when you start to lose one or two arteries, right, you, you know, like some of the blood vessels, you can survive, but when you start to lose critical arteries, it becomes closer and closer to a catastrophic event. And that's what we're seeing here. Losing this vessel is bringing us closer to that catastrophic heart attack. And that would be, of course, the Ukrainian defenders, some of the most experienced and well-equipped troops in the Ukrainian formations, getting encircled by the Russians. And I really, really worry that... Uh, Zalhuzny, the former commander-in-chief of Ukrainian Armed Forces, was absolutely proved to be willing to yield territory to Russia in order to inflict casualties and preserve Ukrainian combat power. But the most recent commander, Sirsky, by reputation, doesn't isn't willing to do that. So is he willing to withdraw from Avdivka so soon after taking command? I think the answer should be yes. I think he needs to get out of here. These guys need to... Ukraine, remember, even if, the, even if we wake up tomorrow and this bill passes, you still have the problem of the fact that this gear has to be packed, shipped, moved to Ukraine, fielded, deployed, 
before. And so we're talking about weeks minimum, more likely months before it is actually putting rounds into Russians. So as always, guys, I will link in the description uh, to house.gov where you can look up your member of the house and you should absolutely write them a polite, well-worded email that simply states that you want to see Ukraine aid passed. And you may think it not, it doesn't work, but frankly, the collective action of everybody on here, you know, again, I sort of suspect the aid was going to pass no matter what, but I bet getting a surge of emails really made a difference. Remember a few hundred, a few thousand, that's, that's a difference maker. I'm going to do it. So anyway, that's all I had guys. Thank you so much. Uh, be sure to hit like, and subscribe, tell the YouTube algorithm that I make good content and I will see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check us out on combatventnews.com. We just dropped literally the craziest, uh, GoPro footage of a trench clearing operation by the foreign legion that I've ever seen. See ya.